Today we're going to make an, a simple example of classes and objects to um, you know, illustrate how classes are used. All right, so let's let's create a class to um, a class to keep track of students in a uh, in a course. So that's the purpose. So we're going to design a little class. <clears throat> All right. So class student object So what is the student? What are what is a student? Well, what data values represent the student. So we first need the um, constructor. All right, so we're going to construct it. And let's think about what data values we need. So perhaps um, last name, first name, and um, maybe major. All right, so we're passing, this is the constructor, so this will create the student. So we have to take these data values and store them inside the object. Self is the object. So self dot L name equals last name. Self dot F name equals first name. Self dot major <coughs> equals major. Okay, so we have the the three key you know initial data values and let's also store the grades. So self dot grades equals an empty list. Now, we would like to we would like to be able to print out a student. So, so what we need to do is to overload the string representation. But before we do that, why don't we test out our our, our program. All right, so we have our main, and then down here we'll run it. So let's see. A equals student. Um, Smith, John, Comp Sci. And just to see that things are working, let's print a dot L name, a dot F name. A dot page. All right. All right. 
So let's run it. So Python intro class.py. So it looks like it works so far. All right? So let's go to our next function. All right. Let's print a student in a better way. So str. So we're going to overload the string representation of the object. In fact, we're going to define it. All right. Return. String. Self dot L name. Let's say we just need the last name and the grades. All right, so let's test this out. So instead of doing this, we'll comment that out and we'll say print A. Well, it looks like we'd want a space here, right? Maybe we'd want to say grades equal Smith. Um, something like this. All right, Smith, and then the grades. <clears throat> OK, so now we need somehow some way to input the grades, right? So let's make a new method in our class. And we'll say define add grade. So we'll add a grade and self. And um, exam grade. And, and this is simple. We'll simply say self grades that append exam grade. All right, so now let's try this out. Let's add a few grades. So a dot add grade. 93. Let's add a few grades. 92. 90. 76. And then we'll print out our object. All right, so it works. Now, suppose we had a whole class of students, right? So let's import our favorite random library. And let's comment this out just to see how it would work for an entire uh, class. So for i in range 10, 10 students. All right, let's make a, um, a fake name. So name equals String of I name plus. So let's make a unique name. And let's say they're all the same major. Major equals comp sign. Um, 
So this is first name, right? And let's make uh, a fake last name. Okay, and let's create it. So A equals student, first name, actually, last name, first name, major, and then let's add a grade. Let's add a few grades for I in range for we already used I for J in range five. A dot add grade. Let's add a random number. Random dot randint number between seventy and a hundred. And then let's let's make a a class. My class is an empty list. And let's, after we add the grades, my class dot. This class has nothing to do with the class here. This is just a list. Um, let's just call it my list. So my list dot append a. Okay, now we have a, a list of students. And then for W in my list, print W. Right, let's try it out. So looks like it works perfectly. Um, we made a list of objects. And since we overloaded the print operator, we could print it out by just taking it from the list. In fact, if you want to see what the list looks like, print my list. It's a bunch of objects. So that's this is not the way to, to see it. 